be obedient to the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless our parents, those who are alive, those who have passed, that Allah bless them, have mercy upon them, and keep them in good health. And we pray for those who have passed before us, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive them of their sins, give them light in their graves, make their graves spacious, make their graves a garden for the garden of paradise, and to accept them into gentle fear doubts. We pray for our children, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect them from the evil of shaitan, and make them from the good believers, the forebearers of Iman, and good examplers of this deen of Al-Islam. May Allah protect them and increase them in knowledge and keep them from among the believers, inshaAllah. All those who are sick, we pray on this day that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provide for them the cure for the illness, give them comfort, increase them in Iman in the time of trials. And we pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our good deeds and our dua on this blessed day, inshaAllah. First, I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless our brother, our Sheikh, Imam, Mustafa. You know, he asked me to do this khutbah a few days ago, but I know, I hope I don't disappoint him. Because I got so tied up and, and inshallah, he was, he was sick, but he was strong. And I asked, told him to come here, but he said, no, I'm in Zastad, so I'm here. So Allah, I pray Allah bless him and continue to give him the strength and the courage that he conveyed to us every day in this masjid the knowledge of this deen, inshallah. Dear brothers and sisters in Islam, you know, on this, on this blessed day, it's something that, you know, all of us sitting in this masjid today, right now, we tend to have, you know, when we are in the masjid, we tend to, our iman tend to be strong. There's nothing can come in between us and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Anytime you're in a situation where, you know, there is the name of Allah is being called, we talk about the deen, we talk about increasing iman, and we are stronger people. And alhamdulillah, there are so many of us who were born into an Islamic home. We are born as Muslims. Of course, all of us were born as Muslims. But we are born in an Islamic home. There are some who came into Islam afterwards. But the Iman is strong. Because we, we, we stay, we, we know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, Imam Shafi, Allah please with him, bless him and have mercy upon him. He used to make a dua similar to this. He says that, Oh Allah, you, you, you give me Iman, you make me Muslim, but I didn't ask for it. But now I want Jannah and I'm asking you for it. So we didn't ask Allah to make us Muslim. By His mercy, from His blessings, He created us and make us Muslims. And for this, we need to give thanks. For this, we always have to be aware that we will have to account for this Iman. Because this is the best thing that has been given to us. The best gift that someone can get is Iman. And so we must take extra care to protect our Iman. We must take that extra care to make sure that Iman is always you know, glowing in our, in our hearts, you know, in our bodies, in, in the things that we do, you know, in the limbs that we are blessed with, that Iman should be reflected. When we speak, the Iman should be reflect, ref, reflected. You know, when we are looking, the, sh the Iman should be reflected. But anything that we do on our jobs, we should be honest, and it should, Iman should be reflected. You know, people should see you, not that you are doing it for show, but people should see that's a good man, that's a good woman, because he or she is a Muslim. You must be identified as a Muslim, and the Iman is what makes us identify as Muslims. You know, because when we are conscious of our Iman, then what we do after then becomes blessed. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides us in doing the right thing, because now I'm conscious that Allah has given me a special gift that someone else probably didn't have. And we pray that they can have it. This gift of Iman. We are born with it, or Allah chooses us to be, to have that Iman. 
and so we must make sure the gift of Iman is always protected. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and in Quran we can read that you know that Iman fluctuates; it goes up, it comes down. You know, and the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam always caution us about when the Iman is low. Like I said, we're in the masjid and our Iman is very high. Or maybe it's Ramadan and we are all fasting and reciting Quran and, and doing extra ibadah and giving zakat. The Iman is very high. Ramadan is one. You know, we leave the Jum'ah, we, we leave, we go back to our jobs and then the Iman tends to start to go down. You know, when we're in the company of Muslims, we tend to you know, keep the Iman very high. So we have to prepare our minds and prepare ourselves that this Iman, when it's fluctuate, when it's going to the lowest point, that we are prepared to recognize that and to keep our Iman firmly intact. It becomes our guide. So be conscious of it. And you know, like in Quran, Allah reminds us of the woman who she used to knit her stuff. I mean, and then you know, make this knot and make it as strong as she can. And then she will go to the marketplace, as the story goes, and, and to, when she get there to sell, but then she start to unravel it. Here we are sitting in the company of Muslims, and we are strong with Iman. We are thinking, well, I should be praying tahajjud, so tonight I'll start to do that. Or, other than my extra five, uh, my, my five prayers. I should start giving more charity. These are the things that are in my mind now because my Iman is strong. But when I leave from the company of Muslims, I said, oh, I forgot about that. I was making promise to myself that I would be a better Muslim. I would make sure my Iman is strong at all times. So this woman, she would unravel the good things that she did. We have no benefits from it. We don't want to be like that. We want to be the people who protect the Iman and keep it protected. That all times we can feel the Iman, we can feel the sweetness of the Iman. That at every moment we want to be with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We want to remember Him. We want to be people who are strong in believing in this Iman and this Iman be our friend. It's guide us, it's telling us what to do and to do the good things, to fulfill the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So let's not take this Iman as just a principle. Because if we just take it at, oh, it's something that, you know, it's in the heart, we can't see it, and we just let it go, don't think of it, then we can lose it easily. You know, it's out of sight, out of mind, right? Or something to that effect. So let it not be something that, oh, I'm a Muslim, and that's it. Always take care to, to make the Iman strong. You know, the, the Sahabas, they used to say, the companions of the Prophet, they used to ask a question. And Allah be pleased with them. Say, so, oh, Prophet of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when we are in your company, our Iman is very high. You know, when we are sitting in the masjid among Muslims, our Iman is high. But when we go back home, our Iman becomes low. <laughs> when we are in your company, it's very high. But when we leave your company, our Iman is low. It's a good example. They were the, they were the companions of the Prophet ﷺ. But yet, it happened to them. We are not in their stage. We are not in that, that you know, honorable situation. So we have to be even more careful of our Iman. You know, because trials will reach us. There will be times when we are tested. And, and that is, those are the times that we need to be, to be serious and be conscious of our Iman when these trials come. Think of the time when the Prophet Wasallam he went to Tyre in the early stage of Islam. And he went there and the people stoned him. And he left the city. You know, they chased him out of the city, they stoned him until, and we know the story, he sat and he was bleeding until the blood dried on his foot. He couldn't get his shoe off. That bad he was beaten. But he sat there and what he did, he turned to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He even blamed himself, oh Allah, if I did anything wrong. 
are we, do, are we trying to reach that stage? That Allah, guide me, I'm doing wrong. Save me from my, from my evil self. Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min shawdi nafsi. Allah, these are duas we have to make. Allah, I seek refuge in you from my evil soul. From what I do evil things. Or things that keep me away from you. From remembering you. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi sat there, he made dua. And then Allah sent the angels to him to bring the two mountains upon the people, but he says no. He went on. These are the times you will, you will face this trial. We have to think of those moments. Think of the Sahabas when they were chased out of their homeland. They were chased out of their homeland. They had nothing. But what they had was their Iman. The Iman that took them where they had to go into Medina. From, you know, they went to the city that became the city of light. Because of them. Because of the, the Prophet wasallam and his, and his companions. Became the city of light. Are we making our cities the city of light as Muslims? With people in, even in our homes. Are we, our homes being, you know, the glow of light is there of Iman. So that our children and our families can see the Iman in us and be, you know, good examples to each other. To each other. Sometimes our wives are praying and doing good works and we just sit and look at them and not doing anything. The brothers I'm talking to. We become lazy. We just take it for granted. I go to masjid every day for Salat al Zur when I go to work. So I'm a strong in Iman. It doesn't work that way. We have to keep the Iman always strong. Now think of it of the rest of the Prophet before the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Ayu Alayhi Salam, he lost his entire family. He was richest as the richest as you can. You can think of. He had all the wealth. He had good health. He had a beautiful wife. But Allah took everything away from him. And for many years, 18 years, you know, he suffered. He was in trial. And then he turned to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. His Iman kept him in those days of, of his trials. I mean, you know the story, so I don't have to repeat it. But my emphasis is that we have to look at these stories, not just as stories, but as a way of making us better Muslims. We just don't read it as a story. We just don't go to the Quran or the Hadith or the stories of prophets and read it and, and read it to our kids and then think that's all. It should be a lesson for us. The prophets of Allah, they were, they were Yusuf alayhi yeah. salam. Allah described it in Quran. Yes, the wife of the Aziz tried to, to, to seduce him. And then he prayed, he said, oh Allah, he was a man, he was the most beautiful person on earth. He said, I also had desires. But he turned to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he said, help me, you Allah. You know, we have to turn to Allah in situations. Our Iman has to be always, you see, if the Iman is not protected, then we will not be able to respond like the prophets did. Respond in the right way. He turned to Allah and he says, you know, Allah, help me. A beautiful dua. Fatir is samawati wal ard. said, Allah, you are the initiator. You are the, you are the one who created everything, the heavens and the earth, and everything in it. And he turned to Allah. Anta, 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 anta wali, wali fi dunya wal akhirah. Yusuf alayhi salam. He prays. Anta waliyu fi dunya wal akhira tawafani musliman wal hikna bi salihin. He made prayers. Oh Allah, this comes from its iman. You are my guardian in this life and in life hereafter. But we have to live that. We just can't say it as a dua. Oh Allah, you are my guardian. You are my Lord. You are my protector. But we are not seeking his help you know, in times of trials. We are not turning to him when maybe we lose our jobs. Maybe someone in the family is sick. And we turn away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala those moments. So our Iman has to always be uppermost in our hearts 
in our thinking, in, in our lives, Iman must be our guide. And we have to always keep polishing it with dhikr Allah, remembering Allah. You are my guardian, O Allah, in this life and in the life hereafter. So when I die, let me die as a Muslim. Let me die with Iman. But how can I pray for dying with Iman when my Iman is not working for me when I'm strong and I'm, I'm in a good position? I'm healthy. I have all the happiness. My Iman is not working for me. I think I did it on my own. I'm working hard. I work overtime. I make money and I'm taking care of my family. It's from me. I forget about Iman. I, I hurry my prayers to get back to something that, that keeps me busy. You know, that, that didn't even help me, would never help me, even in this life, the things that we are, we are busy with. Instead of busy, you know, protecting our Iman, Zikrullah, remembering Allah, seeking us far a hundred times per day, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says. Seeking, you know, the treasures of the paradise. La ilaha illa anta, subhanaka inni kuntu min al-dhalameen. La hawla wa la quwata illa billah. These are the things should be in our heart. We should, our minds should always be working, remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Of course we have to think of how we're going to make our living. Of course we have to think how we're going to protect our families. But in that thinking, Allah should be uppermost. Iman should be our guide. Oh Allah, I'm turning to you. Show me the way. Is this the best investment I can make? Guide me. So when you get into it, you make your investment and then the stock market goes down like, like it's doing this week. You know, everyone is losing money. You know, I heard someone say to me, you know, I, I, we were talking last Sunday, we were at a program and he said, oh, I lost a hundred something dollars. But, you know, and it's amazing the way he responded. He said, but Allah is our Lord. You make it back. You know? And that, that makes you feel happy. Someone is saying to you, I lost all this money in the stock market, but Allah is my Lord. Something to that effect, he says. He, he turned to Allah at the same time. And everyone that was standing there was amazed because the way he responded. And this is what we should be doing in our life. Always responding that Allah is there as our guardian. Allah is our guide, our friend, our protector, and He will take care of us. Anta waliyu fi dunya wa lakira. Tawafani musliman. Wallah, you know, make me Muslim. Let, let, let Iman be in my heart when I'm dying. Walif nabi salihin and make me from among those who are righteous in the paradise. Among the, the prophets and, and the martyrs and the you know, all the good people. But that, this journey towards the Hikma Salihin can only be realized if you are living the life of the Salihin. If you are living the life of being truthful and being a Muslim who observes my prayers on time with consciousness. You know, sometimes we ask the question, and many times we talk about it, is that when I start praying, then my mind is all over the place. I'm not sure if I pray three rakat or four rakat. One of the ways to, to stop that is always keep our mind with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when we come into the prayers, our mind would be with Allah. You know, think of the presence, you know, the present time. You know, learn to do that. You know, I'm not telling you to go into meditation, but do Islamic meditation with dhikr Allah. You know, and then Allah will guide us when we stand for prayers. We're not going to think of what happened next. We'll think of the prayers right now. And then shaitan will not be able to attack us. So I pray Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make this moment, this moment, a, a blessed moment for us. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from those who protect our iman and that our iman be the guide for us. That our iman be the way that, that, that we can recognize Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in every moment of our life, in every situation in our life, be it happiness or be it sadness. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is our protector and our friend and our guardian. That this is always uppermost in our mind. And that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us people of, of zikr and may Allah make us people of paradise. <laughs>
إن الحمد لله الحمد لله حمد كثيرا تجيبا مباركا فيه الله نور السماوات والأرض أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله بعد اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد ربنا ظلمنا أنفسنا وإن لم تغفر لنا وترحمنا لنكوننا من الخاسرين يا برز السيستم الإسلام أجين أي بري الله سبحانه وتعالى إنكريس السيمان Increase us in knowledge of this deen of Al-Islam to make us righteous Muslims, to make us Muslims who consciously, always aware that Iman is our friend, Iman is our guide, and we need to protect this Iman. I pray Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continue to show us the right way. Allahumma salif kulub salif qalba dinik, that our hearts always be on thee. You know, this is a dua that the Prophet used to make most. Oh Allah, you, Allahumma salif kulu, you are the one who guides. Uh, so guide my heart toward the deen. Just to make this, this dua consciously. So we need to, this was a Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Used to make dua to Allah, to guide me, to make my, you know, my, my way, guide me towards the deen. <laughs> Perfection in the deen. Perfection in this religion, in the way of life. He used to make this dua constantly. What about us? We cannot, you know, just say, okay, when I get some time, I'll sit down and remember Allah. You know, the Quran is there for us to read and to understand and try to implement. You know, if we don't get to the point of implementing what we learn, then something is wrong. We have to start evaluating ourselves. We sit in the classes, we hear lectures, we are, now we have so many lectures on YouTube, and we all sit and listen. But when it's done, we, we take it off, and then we go back to our own ways. There's nothing that we observe from the, you know, from the, the what we listen to. We just listen it to pass time. Change that habit. Listen to it, and say, well, today, after 15 minutes, or after 10 minutes, I'm listening to this person talking on, uh, talking to me, and I'm doing it because I want to increase my iman. Because what he's, he or, or she is saying, or I'm attending a program, and I'm going there not just that the imam would say, oh, it's a very good brother or sister, they attend this program. I'm going there that when I leave that program, or I finish listening to the lecture, I'm going to implement what I heard, try to do as much as I can to make myself a better Muslim, to, to guard my Iman, to make my Iman my life, to make it my guide, to make it my light. And if the Iman is not in our uppermost, in our thought and our mind, then we have to start sitting and reconsider what we are doing. If the, if the, if the job is keeping us away from Salat or Jummah, you know, I, I, so many times you hear people say, well, I could miss two Jummah, and come on the third one, and then I'll be forgiven. Yeah, it's the day of Eid, and it's on a Friday, so you know I take the easy path out. You know, though it's allowed, not you know if you pray the, the Eid so that you don't have to go to the Juma if it's on a Friday. But don't take the easy way out in everything that in life. The more, the more. Remember, it's, it's a simple thing. It's not even involved in. The more effort we make. It's the more we gain. Is that correct? The more effort we make, it's the more we gain. We take time and come to the masjid, take our time, and while I'm coming, I'm doing my zikr and I'm coming. Allah protect me. SubhanAllah. Alhamdulillah. Allah Akbar. You say it ten times each, and you get the, 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 the goodness of paradise. Forgiveness. You see, you know, as you walk and you come, you, you're protecting your iman in the street, remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I'm not saying this, you know, it's not something difficult to do. We have to start practicing it. You know, we have to start get up on time for Salatul Fajr. We would never pray on time 
if we don't start making efforts to do it. We would, we would not be strong as a Muslim if every time there's an easy path, you take the easy path. The Prophet says that when, when there's choices, take the easy path. Take the easy one. But it doesn't mean that we're just going to give up on everything and say the Prophet says take the easy one. If uh, we always have to let Iman be our guide, always protecting us, always be uppermost. And I pray Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from those who protect our Iman and remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as often as possible. Allahumma arzukti qadla al mawti tawbata. Oh Allah, provide for us. Provide for us the tawbah at the time of our death. And let us die. When I'm dying, let me die. Let us die with Iman. With Shahada. La ilaha illallah. There's none to be worshipped but Allah. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the Prophet of Allah. Wabada al mawti jannata. And Allah grant us jannah when we die. You know, because we seek happiness in this life, we seek happiness in the life hereafter. You know, I want to I want to close with, with, with that since I just came to my thought. You know, there's a saying, you know, someone said, I, I'm not sure if it's a hadith or from a great scholar, but it's a beautiful saying. You know, he says that the, the, the person says that, you know, how can I be sad in my life? How can I be sad when Allah is my Lord? SubhanAllah. How can I be sad when Allah is my Lord? And think of that. Something that can guide us you know, into doing the right things. Into always turning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now he's my Lord. So why should I be sad? Oh Allah help me. If, if when I make my dua, Allah I'm in problems, help me. But the problem is not solved. It means Allah has, has blessed us because he's keeping that trial for us. And Yom al Qiyamah will see the blessings of it. So we're not losing. Because we're turning to Allah, you know, and the story of the of the caterpillar, you know, I always have hope, you know, this, we all travel on the train, I saw this on the train, something very good to see, it said the, 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 the sign said the caterpillar thought that it was the end of the world, but then it became a beautiful butterfly, there's always hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, let's put our hope and our trust in Allah, the walk Allah, and then Allah would always be our friend and our guard and guardian. May Allah forgive me and forgive you. May He cause us to be from the righteous Muslims. May Allah make us people of paradise. May Allah forgive our families. Bless us in our, in, in our work. Bless us in our families and bless our wealth. And may Allah make us from those who take care of the, of the people in need. Now at this point we need, there are so many people who are suffering from the hurricane in Florida and all these places. Help, if you can help, Give it to Sheikh Mustafa or to uh, Saeed downstairs and say this is for the people who are suffering from the hurt, earthquake and hurricanes. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us people who bring good to others and bring happiness to others. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rewards us for effort. Rabbana ولوالدي وللمؤمنين يوم يقوم الحساب اللهم عيني على ذكرك وشكرك وحسن عبادتك اللهم إنا نسألك الجنة ونعوذ بك من النار ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وكنا ذاب النار ربنا لا تواخذنا إن نسينا أو أخطانا ربنا ولا تحمل علينا إسرا كما حملته على الذين من قبلنا ربنا ولا تحملنا ما لا طاقة لنا به واعف عنا واغفر لنا وارحمنا أنت مولانا فانصرنا على القوم الكافرين إبار الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإنتاع ذي القربة وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والضرب كأيدكم لعلى في الدركة المخلصة